Hello and welcome to another Portworx demo. My name is Bhavan Shah and in this demo we look at a couple of application migration scenarios. We have two scenarios. The first one is uh, talking about application migration from an on-prem Red Hat OpenShift cluster to an on-prem Amazon EKS Anywhere cluster. And the second scenario is uh, on-prem Red Hat OpenShift cluster to Amazon EKS cluster running in the public cloud. Let's talk about the first scenario. We have two clusters running inside my own data center on v VMware vSphere clusters. One is Red Hat OpenShift and the other one is Amazon EKS Anywhere. Both of these clusters have Portwox Enterprise configured, deployed and configured on top of it. And we have a demo application uh, installed for the migration uh, demo. The, we'll start the migration process by first creating a cluster pair object between our source cluster and our destination cluster. This cluster pair object allows us to build a trust relationship between these two clusters, which then allows us to set up a migration job. We uh, perform the migration by defining a migration specification and applying it using a YAML file against our source cluster. As part of the migration, Portwox will move not just the persistent volumes, but all Kubernetes objects from the source to the destination cluster and uh, deploy it automatically on your Amazon EKS Anywhere clusters. In the second scenario, what we'll do is we'll take uh, the same on-prem Red Hat OpenShift cluster and instead of moving it to another on-premises cluster, we'll move it to an Amazon EKS cluster running in US East 1 in the public cloud. So we'll, we'll have a, we have a similar setup where we have our source cluster with Portwox Enterprise deployed running Red Hat OpenShift and we have an Amazon EKS cluster with Portwox Enterprise uh, configured as well. We'll start by creating a cluster pair object between the two clusters and then define a migration spec using a YAML file. Inside the migration spec, you can customize your migration operation for your application using a set of parameters, which include things like uh, include resources. So which we set to yes, because we want Portworx to move not just your persistent volumes, but all the different Kubernetes objects as well. We want to start the applications uh, as and set that flag as true as well, because as soon as the migration is done, we want the application to come online on our destination site as well. So you can customize each migration operation based on your use case. But this is how uh, in this demo, we'll see how Portworx can help you with these migration operations. So without further ado, let's see all of this in action. To perform our migration operations for the first scenario, we have our OpenShift cluster on the top in the black putty session, and we have an EKS Anywhere cluster on the bottom in the white putty session. Both of these clusters are running on-prem, and our OpenShift cluster is a, a three master, four worker node cluster with Portworx installed. So let's exec into one of the Portworx pods and look at the operational state and the status of our worker nodes. Uh, you can use a simple pixie cuttle status command PixieCuttle is another CLI utility that Portwox provides. And we can see that Portwox is operational and all four OpenShift worker nodes are contributing to the overall Portwox storage pool. Let's check the same thing on our Amazon EKS Anywhere cluster as well. So if we exec into one of the Portwox pods, we can use the same PixieCuttle status command and see that the three EKS Anywhere worker nodes are contributing 150 gigs of storage each for a total capacity of 450 gigs across our Portwork storage pool. So now that we have our source and destination sites configured or source and destination clusters configured with Portworx, let's look at the demo application. So let's exit out of the Portworx pods on both cluster and look at our demo application, which is deployed in, our, in, in a namespace called demo. As you can see, it's a simple Postgres instance deployed using a Kubernetes deployment object. Uh, it includes one pod uh, with two containers, the Postgres container and a PG bench load generation container. And it has two persistent volume claims or PVCs. These PVCs hold the data and state for our Postgres instance. Let's exec into the Postgres uh, pod and look at the different databases that PG bench has generated for us. So you can do a slash L and look at all the databases. In our case, we have 50 databases configured inside our Postgres instance. So our goal is to migrate all of these 50 databases from OpenShift to Amazon EKS Anywhere clusters. 
As with any migration, we'll start the process by defining a cluster pair object. So cluster pair specification is something that you generate on your destination cluster, but you apply it against your source cluster. So you generate the spec, store it in a YAML file, and then you copy it over to your source side. And let's make sure we have the correct namespace configured, which is demo and then the correct options set, which should reflect the IP address, port number, and the cluster token for the destination port work storage cluster. Once you have every parameter configured the way you want, we can just use a simple kubectl or OC uh, CLI commands to apply this cluster pair object using the YAML file against our source cluster. So let's do that. And once the cluster pair object is created, you can monitor the status using a stork CTL command. So this stork CTL command gives you the status of your storage synchronization and your scheduler uh, status as well. So both of those are ready. So our cluster pair is now created and successfully deployed. The next step in a migration operation is defining the migration specification. So here you can configure a few different things. You can give it a name. You can specify the a namespace, which in our case is demo, which has all the resources that belong to our application. You can additionally specify the cluster pair that should be used for this migration. So we'll use the cluster pair that we just created. We can set additional flags like include resources and start applications to true so that a portworks migrates not just your persistent volumes, but all your different application configuration and Kubernetes objects and starts or powers on those applications or deploys pods on the destination cluster once the migration is done. So let's go ahead and apply this migration specification and start the migration operation. So to do that, you can use OC apply. And once the migration object is created, you can monitor the migration using stork CTL get migrations in the demo namespace. Here we show you the stage, which in this case is volumes. So our volumes are the first ones to be migrated from source to destination. And then it also shows you the resources and the status. You can get additional details using a kubectl describe migrations command. And here you can see what's actually happening. So you can see the persistent volumes. And if we catch it at the right time, you can see the number of bytes that have been copied over from source to destination as well. In the meantime, let's do a watch command on the destination cluster so that we see those objects as they are deployed and uh, do the same like do a similar watch command on the source cluster for stork ctl get migrations command so both of these clusters are running on my vmware vSphere data center environment so it, the uh, migration operation shouldn't take long long uh, it, it's it is shorter than the amount of time it will take us to migrate this application from on-prem to a public cloud amazon eks cluster so in a couple of minutes we should see those objects starting to de be deployed and like that's reflected using the watch command as well now a stock cdl gives you a status that okay the migration has been successful two volumes and seven resources have been migrated in two and a half minutes Let's validate that everything got copied over to the destination site. So we see both of our persistent volume claims being deployed. And then when we look at kubectl get pods, you can see we have our PG bench or Postgres pod. Uh, we can similarly exec into the Postgres pod and look at all the different databases as well, whether they got migrated or not. So let's exec into it, use psql utility and login as the PG bench user. And then we'll just use a simple slash L command to look at all the databases. Again, you can like go into each database and look at the, the different tables and verif verify entries, but all 50 of those database instances were migrated from our source OpenShift cluster to our destination Amazon EKS Anywhere cluster running inside your own data center environment. So this is the first scenario where we moved an application between two clusters, uh, although they had different distributions, but running inside the same data center. In the next scenario, we'll take this a step further and migrate the same application across different cloud environments, across different Kubernetes distributions. So to do that, let's uh, look at our source, our new source and destination clusters. So for our source, we still have our Red Hat OpenShift cluster running on-prem and our destination cluster is an Amazon EKS cluster running in US East One. That's the white terminal session. So uh, here on our source side, we have three master nodes, four worker nodes with Portworx already installed. 
So you can get all of those details using kubectl or ac get nodes and get pods in the kube system namespace. If we exec into the one of the portworks pods, let's verify that our OpenShift cluster and portworks on top of it is still operational and all worker nodes are still up and running. So that's that's the case. So px is operational. Each node is contributing 150 gigs of storage. So our source cluster is ready. Let's look at the demo app that we have running on our source cluster. Similar to our first scenario, it's a simple Postgres instance that we are using for this migration demo. There's one deployment, one pod, uh, a couple of persistent volume claims. And next, uh, once we know what resources we are migrating, we can initiate the migration operation. Before we do that, let's uh, look at the portworks uh, status on the destination cluster. So here we have a six worker node cluster, but uh, we have configured portworks in a way that only three out of those six nodes are contributing storage to our portwork storage pool. The other three nodes are contributing compute and can be scaled up or down as needed by your applications. So let's use the PixieCuttle status utility and look at the status of our portworks cluster. So portworks is operational and uh, you see all the six nodes, but then only three of those are configured as storage nodes providing 150 gig storage each. Now that our destination cluster looks good, let's go ahead and look at our cluster pair specification. Uh, it's the same scenario here. We generated the spec on our destination EKS cluster, but we are applying it against our source OpenShift cluster. Here, we'll verify that our namespace is configured correctly and all the options uh, like the IP address, the cluster token and the port number look good for our destination portwork storage cluster. Once we have verified all of these details, we can apply it using a kubectl uh, apply or an oc apply command against our OpenShift cluster in the demo namespace. So once we do that, you can monitor your cluster pair using either kubectl get cluster pair uh, in the demo namespace, or you can use a stork ctl get cluster pair in the demo namespace. Both of these give you different levels of information, so you can choose which one you want to use. Our storage status and our scheduler status show ready. So our cluster pair is up and running. And now as the next step, we can uh, define a migration specification and apply it against our cluster. So let's look at the migration object that we have for this particular migration. Uh, so we have a simple uh, migration file called app migration.yaml. Let's make sure the name, the namespace, and all the different parameters look good. So it is migrating anything that's present in, a, present in our demo namespace. Uh, we have selected the right cluster pair this time, uh, and we have set those include resources, start applications, and purge deleted resources flags, uh, how we want it for our migration. Let's apply this migration spec using kubectl apply or oc apply command, and use that YAML file and apply it in the demo namespace. As soon as you apply this, uh, you can monitor the state of your migration using three different commands. One is stork ctl get migrations in the demo namespace. Uh, here you can see the status, the phase, uh, or the, the stage, the volumes and resources being migrated. You can also do a cube ctl get migrations. And the third command that you can use is a cube ctl describe migrations to get additional details. Kubectl describe migration not just shows you the number of resources that are being moved, but it also shows you where they are. So like for our persistent volume claims, it shows uh, which volume is, is being migrated right now and how many bytes have been transferred from the source to the destination site. So this is where you can get additional details. You can keep monitoring this, uh, the kubectl describe command for that additional level of detail, or you can do a simple stork ctl get migrations uh, and, and put that with a slash uh, dash w flag uh, for watch purposes. So let's do that. Let's do a dash w on the stock CDL get migrations. Uh, as you can see, none of our volumes have moved over. On the destination side, on, in the meanwhile, let's do a watch command on kubectl get all in the demo namespace. Here you can, like, as soon as the volumes are migrated over, we start copying over the Kubernetes objects and that's uh, this watch command will basically help us look at those as soon as they are deployed. So this time in the, in the second scenario, we are copying our application from an on-prem cluster to a public cloud cluster. So the migration time will depend on the uh, bandwidth that you have available connecting these two sites together. So uh, you can either have an IPsec VPN tunnel 
configured between these two sites or you can have a direct connection between your on-prem data center and the region where your Amazon EKS cluster is running and you can have your traffic go through these pipes. Uh, once you have your applications and your persistent volumes migrated, you will see a, a successful status from the stalk CTL command and it will show you the number of volumes and resources that did get migrated. Uh, we can verify everything was successfully copied to the destination site by using kubectl get all, uh, kubectl get pvc in the demo namespace. You can see all of our objects do show up. Let's verify that all of our databases did indeed make it to the destination site by executing into the Postgres pod uh, and then using the PC equal utility and the pgbench user and doing a slash l command. So uh, this is where we verify that all the 50 databases that we had configured on the source side were copied to our destination cluster as well. As in both of these scenarios, we sh uh, saw how easy Portworks makes application migrations across different Kubernetes clusters and allows you to customize your hybrid cloud or on-prem uh, application migration or portability solution. That's it for this demo. Until next time, thanks for watching.